let's say, you know, I'm starting out, want to get a credit card. How do I know what credit card is the best one for me? Because we all see the myriad of credit card offers. There's just, there's so many options. It's overwhelming. There are so many. So one thing, Jonathan, obviously we're talking about credit cards today. I came across this stat that I wanted to share with you and kind of get your thoughts on it. Obviously this was at the end of the year, but it said that um, the average credit card debt per borrower is about 10% higher than the year before. Yeah. And maybe that happens every year, I don't know, but it was ushering in an all time high of just over $1 trillion in US credit card debt. Yeah. So obviously we're using credit cards as a nation. Um, Hopefully we can talk about some best practices of usage. Definitely. You know, we think of a credit card, I think people immediately think it's a it's a debt instrument. It's a, something that can get you into trouble, which it absolutely can. Yeah. But there's so many other advantages and features of a credit card that if used wisely, it can really be a, a beneficial tool for people. And so we hear stats like that and, yeah. and they're real. And, and, and if not managed wisely, uh, credit cards can get people into trouble. Um, so it's just a matter of understanding what it, what its purpose is and, and how to use it and how to be smart so that it doesn't bear you. Yeah. And that's what I want to just hit right out of the gate because there's other financial podcasts that you can listen to out there mm-hmm. and their the, their message is cut your credit cards up. Don't ever use them. Yeah. Cash is your friend. It was what funny, are your thoughts on that? If, even just preparing for this a couple days ago, no joke, on my local community Facebook page, somebody asked a question saying, I'm looking for a credit card. What's the best? So immediately my you know eyes light up and, and I start scrolling and all of the comments were interesting. People made different recommendations, but then there was this huge string of people recommending, ooh, credit cards got me into trouble. I, I won't do it. Um, cash, cash is the way to go. And while everybody's situation is different, it's something that I would highly recommend against. Um, if you think about it, carrying only cash um, is, is pretty dangerous. If, if you lose that cash, nobody's showing back up on your doorstep saying, oh, here, here's some money back to, to make you whole again. That money's just gone. Um, it's dangerous to, you know, risky to carry yeah, cash as to absolutely. where there's protections in place with carrying credit cards. If, if there's fraudulent activity or you lose it or it's stolen, uh, it's not going to come back and, and, and bite you. You're protected and, and there's no liability for the card holder. Yeah, I love that, right? Because someone does get a hold of your credit card, there's protections in place for you. Yeah, and, and it's not accessing your cash. It's, it's somebody else's for the short term. And uh, we can get into this later. But if you pay it off before you know the interest starts hitting, it's not costing you anything. And in fact, it, it can even reward you. And I think you're talking to Brad later about those rewards and the fun stuff on how you can actually profit from spending your own money, if that makes sense. Yeah, I love that. So um, as we were looking at things, I found like two ways to use a credit card, Yeah. right? So tell us about what those two ways are. I'll maybe illustrate it with a personal example. I love that. I was raised, you know, to avoid debt, which is a good thing. Be very, very cautious, um, very, very leery of debt. So when I was 18 and, and able to get a credit card, I was anti credit card. No way in the world. I'm not going to get buried. I'm not going to have it ruin me whatsoever. So fast forward a few years later, my parents were getting ready to celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. And so my siblings and I po- pooled our money together and said, let's get them a nice night away somewhere. And so I called the, the hotel to, to reserve the room for them and they wanted a credit card. They wouldn't take my debit card. Well, I didn't have a credit card. So mm. I had to borrow my girlfriend's at the time. She's my wife now, but I had to borrow her card. <laughs> had to borrow her card to make the reservation because it was it's a payment tool. It's a it's a way to make payments. And I think that's what we have to remind ourselves. We call it a credit card, but it's really a, a, a tool to facilitate payment. Um, continuing on with that story, about a year later, I go to buy my first car. And I ended up paying a couple percentage points higher than I needed to because I had no credit history. So mm-hmm. I was deemed a risky borrower, which is funny that I work in the, the job that I have now. And this was me earlier, not understanding credit, not understanding credit cards was against them all. But if you think about it, I thought about this later. If I had used the credit card wisely and built a little bit of a credit history, it would have saved me money on that car later. So in a way, credit cards, if you use it to build your credit history, can save you money on cars and homes um, by having better interest rates down the road later. Yeah, I love that. and just in the environment we're in now. Not to say it's not possible to buy a home with cash, but it certainly is way harder. <laughs> oh, definitely. Right? So having that history is just important. Credit histories matter. They, As you look at the credit history, they want to see that you manage different kinds of credit. Um, some revolving, which is credit cards, revolving debt, auto loans. If you've had other home loans in the past, they like to see a mix of kinds of credit and how you've managed that. And making your payments on time is, is, key, is key. Payment tool is mm-hmm. one way, right? That we use our card, but then you said borrowing as well, right? Yeah. 
in a perfect world, you don't have to borrow. You always have enough funds for your needs. Uh, but if you're ever in a situation uh, where you don't have enough money, a, a credit card can be one of, of tools. It depends again on what you need the money for, but it can be nice to make that payment if whether it be auto repairs or others versus the alternatives that can be a, a lot more expensive. Um, so it is there. Uh, obviously paying that off sooner and paying it off ideally before the interest hits is, is even better, but um, making more than the minimum payments is another great idea to um, help you um, minimize your debt and also build credit history. Love that. So how do I, let's say, you know, I'm starting out, want to get a credit card. I know that I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, how do I know what credit card is the best one for me? Because, I mean, we all see the myriad of credit card offers, whether it's in our mailbox, in ads that we're getting, right? Whether it's from watching them at sporting events or on your phone. There's just, there's so many options. It, it's overwhelming. There are yeah. so many, like you said, mailbox, all of the the different ways that they try to reach out to you. I think the first thing to really look at is, is do you have a relationship with that organization already, whether it be your bank or your credit union? If you have a relationship with them to start with, that's a good start to try to keep things in one place. That doesn't mean that would be the best card for you per se. Um, so you might want to look at, again, another major thing to look at is, do does it have an annual fee? I would mm -hmm. avoid anything with an annual fee. There's so many that don't have annual fees that you don't need to, to look at that. When you get those things in the mail, and make sure you flip that over. There's always the um, disclosures on the back and you want to look at the rates. Are they going to yeah. charge you? What, what is the actual interest rate? What are they charging you for cash advances? If you're late, do they charge you a higher interest rate? And that's supposed to be spelled out very clearly and in large print on the back. And so I would look for things with no annual fee and, and uh, favorable rates. I love that you said, what's the actual interest rate, right? Because sometimes it's like 0%. Yeah. But it's, is it always going to be that? No, oh, there are a lot of promotions yeah. to, to get you in the door. And some of them are actually really, really good. Um, one that I think can be tricky at times that we see all of the time is, is a balance transfer offer where they offer you 0% for this long. And so that, who doesn't want 0%? Right. But they're charging you three to five percent up front just to uh, to make that transfer. So right off the bat, you get hit with mm -hmm. additional um, cost to you. And at Mountain America, we at times will run different promotions here and there where we, where we will actually pay you for those balance transfers. So make sure: or is it costing me, or am I square with nothing, or, or am I actually benefiting from doing this transfer? So read the fine print as Definitely. you're looking at those cards. Love it. So let's say. I maybe already have a wallet full of cards, uh -huh. right? I've got one with my credit union, maybe that, you know, awesome bank offer that came in the mail. Um, also maybe a department store because they had a really good offer too. How do I manage this wallet full of cards that I have now? Yeah, I would make a list. And what you want to do is sometimes when people get real ambitious, they think, oh, I'm going to cut up these cards. I'm going to cancel my lines of credit can be a good thing, but if you go too far, it can actually end up hurting you credit-wise. Uh, credit bureaus like to see that you spend less than 30% of your available credit. So if you add up all the limits on all of those cards, they like to see that your balances are under under 30%. Okay. So sometimes people with good intentions think, I'm going to close all of my lines of credit. But by doing that, you're bringing that, that number down so that what you owe, that percentage of how much you owe versus what's available to you, it, it's going up. So it might be a good um, idea, even if you don't plan on using some of them, to keep those lines open um, and, and just, again, make sure that you're spending less than 30% of your total available balance. Okay. Love that. And then obviously we want to watch what the interest rates are, yeah. right, for each of those. You mentioned department store cards. Those can be really um, scary and, and tricky as well. They, they typically have much higher interest rates. National credit card averages are 23, 24%. Department stores are 28 to 30 um, on average. And so a lot of times you're at the cashier and they, they, they give the, that great offer to you, right? Hey, do you want to save 10%, 20% on your purchase today? And you get excited by that, but end up paying much more than that in the long run. Yeah. Another stat I came across recently was that um, as of right now, right? Average credit card interest rate is 24.37%, yeah. which again, we're in a different rate environment than all of us are used to, right? For yeah. the past several years. But that is just insane to me. It is. If you think about, there's an example I, I heard the other day that if you had a, a $5,000 credit card balance and we're making just the minimum payments to pay that off, let's say you have a kid who's in eighth grade, yeah. you wouldn't have that paid off until they're a freshman in college, oh. not a freshman in high school, a freshman in college, just on a $5,000 debt. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So making more than the minimum payment, you said that earlier, yeah. is key. Okay. Obvious. Obviously, that's awesome. Um, when we look at credit cards, usage and all of that, and really just money in general, right? We know that um, it's more than just a transaction. 
our behaviors part of it, right? You get emotion involved. So how, like when it comes to behavior and credit cards, what does that look like from your perspective? It, and this is the part where man, managed poorly, it can get people into trouble because yeah. there's a little bit of, of accounting and, and the movement of money to, to make sure that it's paid off. Meaning you, you purchase the car, make the purchase with the card today, um, but you have this balance now. And so how do you manage that? Mm -hmm. Again, you want to pay that off less before the, the interest kicks in, which is usually about a month later. And so some people will wait until the month, but they realize they've been swiping that card a little too much throughout the month and they mm -hmm. don't have enough cash to, to cover that. So a great way to do that would be to pay it off weekly. Um, maybe a little excessive, but I know people who will even go to daily. They'll, they, if they swipe the card that day, they go into their online banking that night, make sure they transfer the cash over to pay pay that off. Um, if that's what works for you, great. Uh, weekly is also a good, good technique to make sure that you haven't spent too much in a short amount of time. Um, and if you can be disciplined and, and, and know you what, you, what your budget is, you can, you can do it monthly, but at least monthly at the latest. Okay, love that. So um, when we're hearing those messages of, hey, use your cash, use your cash, that's a great way to actually do that, right? Yeah, if you have a card with rewards features and you're earning those points, um, the things that you're gonna normally buy anyway, groceries, gas, you're, you're actually receiving something back for that. And then you're just taking the money out of your checking and paying off that balance in full so there's no interest. And then it's fun when you get those rewards, it's just extra money coming to you. Let's say we have this wallet full of cards and maybe we've ran up some balances. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? What's the best next thing for me to do knowing full well that I, I need to keep using them? Yeah. It's habit, but how do I best manage all of that? You may want to consider if you have sizable balances and, and those have grown, if you think you can, if you look at your current situation and you can have those paid off in a few months, great. I would stick to that, figure out how much you need to pay and, and make it happen. If it's gonna be more than that, you might wanna look into a debt consolidation loan okay. where you take those balances, put them into one loan that's on a set term, you know, two, three, four, four, maybe even five years with a set payment. And, and you'll actually pay back vastly far less interest in doing it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then comes the discipline part because now that those cards have a zero balance, you've paid them all off with your new loan. You, you can't go back out and rack those back up again. So you got to be really smart in making sure that you stick to a budget. Yeah, I actually have um, a friend of mine, right, who went through a divorce. It's never pretty, never yeah. fun, right? But ended up inheriting a whole lot of debt. Yeah. Right. Um, and it was on credit cards at department stores, right, which is what it is. Um, she ended up consolidating all of her credit card debt and it saved her like ridiculous tens of thousands of dollars yeah just to get it all in one place instead of making tiny little payments here and there yeah it was insane like i because you hear debt consolidation and i feel like there has been messaging out there of oh it's fraud don't do it no we it, it's just amazing and baffling at the same time when you sit down uh our loan officers and our branches have tools that that we can input all of this this debt and then really give you options, whether it be you have maybe equity in a vehicle or if it's just a signature loan, however much you want to do to consolidate. Yeah. And when you put the numbers side by side, so many people don't believe it at first. They, they look at it and say, there's no way. It, it's, I always say it's just math. Like you, it, it makes the decisions very clear. And if you're in a better situation than what you're, what could potentially um, occur with a debt consolidation, the math's gonna explain that. It's gonna show you, just keep what you have. But if the math shows that the consolidation is more beneficial for you, it's gonna be really clear that way too. Anyway, doing the side-by-side -side comparison, um, like in your friend's case, when she did the consolidation loan, um, it was probably very clear, like, well, this is a no-brainer. Why wouldn't I wanna save tens of thousands of dollars? Yeah, exactly. And so I think just having people understand, it's just a, a question away, Yeah. right? Yeah. So meet with a financial loan officer and advisor. Obviously, we're partial to Mountain America. Come <laughs> in and visit us, but honestly, Right. If you're hearing this and you're not next to a Mountain America branch, but you want to call into the service center or go to your favorite financial institution mm -hmm. and just ask the question. You, you've already bought the stuff, right? Like you've made the purchases. Those things have already happened. Now, what do you do with it? If it's if it's short term, credit cards are a great short term tool or instrument. But if it's enough debt that it's going to be long term before you can pay that off, uh, you might want to look at a consolidation for sure. Okay, love that. Um, so talk to me about payment strategies, right? We've talked about, hey, yeah, we can make weekly payments, monthly payments. You said before the interest accrues, what does that look like? So from the time you make a purchase, um, again, read the fine disclosures on the back, but yeah. the way that, that it works is you have until your next billing cycle before interest starts accruing, you're allowed time to, to be able to go back and pay that off. If you pay that off by the end of the month in full, um, then th there'd be no interest charges. Yeah, right, there's that grace period, right? Yeah. Is that what they call it? Yeah.